All right, so let's read the problem together. A company is considering building a manufacturing plant. They determine the weekly production cost at site A to be A of X equals 3X squared, while the production cost at site B is B of X equals 8X plus 3. So they're um, looking at the cost of making stuff at two different sites, A and B, where X represents the number of products. So X represents the thing they're making in hundreds, and A of X and B of X, that might be important, are in the production cost in hundreds of dollars. So A of X and B of X represent the cost based on X, the product they're making. So it costs different amounts to make the same thing X in different locations. Graph the cost functions on the set of axes below and label them A and B. And then we're going to answer the question, if the company plans on manufacturing 200 products, which site should they use and why? All right. So this problem seems really intense, but it's actually really straightforward. All right, so to solve this, we'll set up a really quick table. And I think you'll see that although this question seems intimidating, we can deal with it pretty quickly. Um, so we'll use, in general, let's use uh, red for A of X. And we'll use a blue for B of X here. Okay, so red and blue. And then we're going to plug in certain inputs. We're going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those aren't random. I'm choosing inputs that they give us on the graph. Look at the graph for a moment. They give us 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 0 as key points. I'm not going to choose 5 or 6 if I want to graph this thing, because it's not even in the domain or the x range that they give us. So we plug 0 into a of x. What do we get? Well, a of x equals 3x squared. So that's 3 times 0 squared. 3 times 0 squared is just 0. And when x is 1, we get 3 times 1 squared, which is 3. 3 times, when x is 2, it's 3 times 2 squared, so 3 times 4, which is 12. And then we have 3 times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And 4 squared is 16 times 3, which is 48. All right, so those are our inputs and our outputs. We can plot those on our graph. We'll plot them in red. Our first point is 0, 0, 0, 0, then 1, 3. So here's 10. We get those up by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So 2... 3 would be about here, 2, 12, right here, 3, 27, 2, 4, 6, here about, right in the middle there, and then 4, 48, 2, 4, 6, 8, here. And then you just want to nicely sketch this out. It's going to curve, right, and there aren't straight lines here between its curvature. You can tell it's going to have that curvature because x is being squared. 3x squared. Now b of x, what's going to happen there? Well, b of x is a linear function. Um, what do they give us? b of x equals 8x plus 3. So here we should get a straight line. We plug in 0. 8 times 0 plus 3, that's 3. Then we plug in 1. 8 times 1 plus 3 is 11. Plug in 2. That's 16 plus 3. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 3. It's 9, right? It's going up by 8 each time, so it goes 27 and then 35. Right? We can check that. 4 times 8 is what? Well, that's 32, plus 3 is 35. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 3 is 27. So these give us our points to plot for the other function. We have 0, 3, right here. Then we have um, the point 1, 11, here. 2, 19. It's a little bit harder to plot because everything is right between. So just make sure you have a straight line. 327, um, right here. Right, they, they cost the same amount here. That's sometimes a critical point. And you could have found that by setting 3x squared equal to 8x squared. And if you solve for x in this equation, you would get that when x is 3, they're both the same, which they are. And then 4, 35, 2, 4, 6, right here. And then just make sure, again, that the, the points line up. You can adjust them slightly if your line's not working, because uh, this is a linear function. And that's b of x equals 8x plus 3. All right. Whew. Now they want to know um, if we're manufacturing 200 products, which do they use and why? So remember, for this part of the question, when they say 200 products, they're actually referring to the number uh, 2 here on the graph, because that 2 represents hundreds. When I first saw this, I actually um, thought that they were actually, I, I lost track of that. And I was inputting 200 for x into both equations, at which point a of x is something like 12 million 
uh, in cost, while B of X is um, many times less than that, right? Because B of X is growing at a linear rate, and the red function here, A of X, would skyrocket. So I lost sight of that, and I was using 200. Now, don't make the same mistake. Read these units carefully. Um, here, you can see at 200 products that A of X is the better choice, because at 200, the cost is only around $1,200, right? Whereas B of X uh, is much higher. According to our table right here at two, you can see B of X is going to cost 1,900 and A of X is going to cost 1,200. So what you can actually write to support your thinking is to show those, those calculations. You could show that um, A of X, right? A of X, which equals three X squared, when you're plugging in 2 for x, that's representing 200, that equals 3 times 4, 2 squared is 4, and that's 12. Whereas b of x, right, b of x, which equals 8x plus 3, when you have b of 2, that's really 16 plus 3, or 19, right, 1900 uh, versus 1200. And you could say, of course, the 1900 is greater, so it's more of a cost, so it's not worth it. Of course, as the graph goes on, A of X, um, if, as you continue to increase uh, the amount of products you're making, uh, once past that point where they're equal, A of X is much more expensive because it's growing um, right along this quadratic path, this curvature path, using this exponential um, power of 2. All right, hope this helped.